Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, July 10th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Renato has been keeping his WebLogic honeypot up and running, but so far he really hasn't gotten much else than crypto miners. And he has already written about this well until earlier this week when he actually got a sort of interesting reverse shell that infected his honeypot. It used the standard WebLogic exploit, nothing really all too fancy about it, but then it does upload an ELF binary that implements the backdoor. This particular backdoor connects back to a command and control server on port 630, which is certainly an odd port and, well, not all that stealthy. It connects back to a host in China and so far it actually looks like most of the exploit attempts that used this type of backdoor were launched from China and according to a virus total probably came from the same actor. Now talk about virus total. VirusTotal, or better, the anti-malware engine it's using, they didn't recognize this particular sample. Now, once the connection is established, then the attacker has the ability to launch arbitrary commands. One interesting tidbit here is that the host, the com compromised host, actually authenticates to this uh, reverse shell, so to the command control server. However, it uses the path Password, replace with your password. So apparently components were reused here without making even minimal adjustments. At this point, Renato hasn't really seen any commands being executed via this reverse shell. Now, sort of interesting, the malware first checks the time zone file, also checks for the presence of a specific .h file. Not really sure what that .h file is about, could be part of the malware, but either way, no commands were executed so far. And then just a day ahead of Microsoft's patch Tuesday, we got a set of patches from Apple. As usual, Apple did patch all of its operating systems. So this includes watchOS, tvOS, iOS, and also OS X or Mac OS. Now, in addition, it also released updates for Safari, iCloud for Windows, as well as iTunes for Windows. The security content as usual for Apple overlaps between these different operating systems. There are a couple of special things to consider. First of all, for OS X, some of the more recent Spectre variants are being patched here and then an interesting change for iOS that I didn't notice when I looked at the security content that Apple published but with this version of iOS Apple makes it more difficult to brute force the passcode on iOS devices. You probably heard of these key devices that law enforcement is now buying in order to brute force passcodes for iOS. Well, this will be more difficult once you applied this latest update for iOS, iOS 11.4.1. With this update, the USB port or lightning port uh, will only be active for an hour after the phone is locked. After that time, devices will be ignored if they connect to the lightning port. So this should reduce the window that would allow someone to use devices like Crakey to brute force your passphrase. In general, it's still recommended to use an alphanumeric passphrase. If you have a reasonable long alphanumeric passphrase, then even with the older versions of iOS, it will be difficult to impossible to actually crack the passphrase in a reasonable time. 
And Microsoft offers an interesting feature in order to improve the security of your cloud active directory passwords if you are using Azure for your active directory functions. What they're actually doing here is including the list of breached passwords. Now, they're not saying that it comes from have I been pwned, but kind of looks like something like this, maybe something they created internally along these lines. But if you enable this, then users will not be able to use passwords that are already compromised. This of course does protect yourself from an actual big threat, which is credential stuffing, where people do harvest credentials from these lists of breached passwords and then attempt to use them against your users. In addition, you can also provide a custom list of passwords that your users should not use. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.